Okay, good evening, everyone. So I want to go back to a topic we started discussing earlier in the week. And Aaron's waiting for me to go back to the Stiran the Bionacha. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. So we mentioned that earlier, at the beginning of the week, the discrepancy that we have at the moment in the parashiot between Eretz Yisrael and Chutz right? Because of the fact that Shabbat, the Kiyarit was Israel, it was the day after Chag, but in Chutz Laaretz it was the second day of Yom Tov. So they read the reading for the second day of Yom Tov. We moved on to Parshat Naso. And the Shabbat, we read what, what Parsha is it. So the, in, if you're in Israel, you know, it's Parshat Baalotcha. If you're in Chutz Laaretz, it's Parshat Naso. At right, the beginning of the week, it was theoretical. Now we're at the end of the week, all the emails start coming out and the Divrei Torah and whatever lists you're on, you'll see, you know, is it, do you send, is it Nassau, is it Baalotcha, do you send both? Whatever it is, with global communication, now it gets a little bit confusing. So, so we mentioned there are a number of questions which come up with this. I can say, if we're in Chutzlaret, or if we're in Israel, what if you're from Israel and you go to Chutzlaret, or vice versa, which parasha do you read? Do you have to hear the other parasha? What do you do about Shnai Mikra? So these are some of, the, some of the questions which come up. And as a basis, as a starting point, you try and look at the answers. We looked at the question, which is that the Kriyata Torah itself, is that a chova of the individual, or is that a chova of the tzibu, of the, uh, you know, of, the, of the collective, of the public? Obviously, a person can't take out the Sefer Torah and read it for themselves, right? It's only done in shul. We only read with a minion when, when you come to shul. The question is, what is, the, what is the nature of that obligation? Is it that each individual has an obligation to hear it? And the condition is you can only hear it when you're there together with them. And, or is it that an individual oneself does not have this, uh, does not have this obligation? Tibor has an obligation. And if you're there, you're, you're, you're part of it. So the truth is the Rishonim don't really discuss this much. There are proofs that are brought here and there from certain things, certain diukim, certain inferences from the language which, which they use. The Achronim talk about it more. Probably the one who made this famous was Rav Baruch Ber, Berkat Shmuel, his country to Yavama, of all places. He quotes a Chakira from Reb Chaim, Reb Chaim of Brisk. And Reb Chaim of Brisk asks this question. He asks it in the, in, he poses it in the following way. And he says, he says, the Nafkamin, would Kriyat Torah be an obligation incumbent upon the individual or incumbent on the Tzibu? He says, the Nafkamin would be out of the din of Rubo Kekulo. We have a principle in halakha, we say rubo kekulo, meaning we judge the majority as the entire, or we look at the entire, the entire uh, collective as, as the majority, it has a number of different expressions in halakha. So for example, this is why, according to some poskim, if you have a minyan, you have 10 people, but really, uh, you know, four of them have already daven, can you still daven tzvilah, and is it still, according to some, machloket, whether it would still be called or not, but since we say that six people, the majority have not yet davened, so therefore we say Rubo Kekulo, and you could go and you could, you could consider that as a minion. It does not mean, Khatam uh, Sofer and others point this out, that Rubo Kekulo only means that when I have that entity there and I can take a certain din and I can apply it to others who would not, who would not apply to, I can't. in the name of Rav Chaim that he asks the question like this. He says, if we say that Kriyat uh, Torah is incumbent upon each and every individual, so let's say the scenario is you have 10 people, you have 10 people in the minion, six of them have not yet heard Kriyat Torah, and four of them already have heard, heard Kriyat Torah. So he says, if each individual has got that obligation, the majority of the individuals there are obligated, and they would need to hear so we say rubo kekulo, we judge it as if all 10 need to hear, and then you can read, and then you have the kreta Torah. On the other hand, if you say that there, there is not an obligation on each one, each individual, rather it's an obligation on the tzibu, on, on, on the community at large, so you need a tzibu that is obligated. You only have nine people who have not heard kreta Torah, not 10, so then you would not be able to, then you would not be able to read. That is how Rav Chaim presents it, that is the that is the, uh, the, the, the nafkamina between the two sides. The truth is, you could, you could argue it the other way around. You could argue and you could say that if you need, even if it is a chiyav on the tzibor, so if the majority of the tzibor has not yet heard it and they have that obligation, so then let's say rubo kekulo and everybody. 
But in any event, he, he presents it the other side, and that is the uh, and that is the question. I mentioned last time as well that Rav Soloveitchik seems to, and this is the way the way he understood Rav Chaim, and, and this is the way that he uh, seemed to pass him, was that it is an obligation on the individual, and that is why it's brought down that when he would fly from uh, from Boston to New York and he was unable to hear the Torah reading, that he would get get together a minion in the in the afternoon to hear the uh, Torah again. But uh, so, so, so that is one, that is one nafkamina that would come out of it. That if we say every individual has, for whatever reason, you missed it, or for whatever reason, if you were, you heard a different parasha because you're in the wrong place, you would have to go seemingly and hear that, uh, make, make every effort to go and hear that parasha again. That would be, that would be one nafkamina. Another nafkamina, which the poskim discuss here is, and it's based on a sugi in the Gemara, but how a person has to conduct themselves during Kriyat Torah. In other words, if every individual has to hear, so there's certain parashiot that we're very makbir on, parashat zachor, for example, which according to many is a, is a Torah obligation for every person to hear parashat zachor. So we make sure we stand up, we make sure we hear every word, we don't miss anything, at some places you, you go back, zecher, zecher, whatever. But, but on an ordinary Shabbos, so obviously you, you're sitting in shul and you're hearing the Torah reading and you should, you know, you should pay attention and you should listen, whatever. But if a person for for whatever reason, misses a word, yeah, or misses a few words. How critical is it? Do you have to go back? Do you have to go read it again? So, so, uh, so, uh, if we say that it's a chovat so it's a chovat The words have been read. You, as an individual, missed a few words. Okay, you, you you missed out, but no, no big deal. But if you have an individual obligation as part of the uh, Torah reading, then you have to go and you have to hear all the words. So, so Moshe Feinstein actually has a tshuva where he says. He says, theoretically, in any event, every individual has to hear every, every word. He says, this is in Shuti Grot Moshe. He says, Torah, Obviously, he says, everybody has to hear every word. I would agree with us, at least, not to, not to miss a single, a single word. He says, he says, what happens if, if you missed a, uh, if you missed a, you missed a word or you missed hearing some of it? He says, practically speaking, it's now it's going to be Tircha that's where you're going to get everybody to go back every time somebody missed a word and <laughs> start the Kriya again. It's not practical, but but really you should uh, you should go back and you should you, you should uh, in theory you, you should have heard it. Okay, so that is so then so how do we pass it? So last time I mentioned that there seems to be a contradiction uh, in the words of the Biolacha. The Biolacha in two places talks about this. Again, does not really address this question directly. But from his words in two different places, we can infer maybe what he what, what he holds. And this is where it gets confusing. So in Siman Kuf Lamed Hay, we mentioned there is a there is a halacha which is brought about moving a Sefer Torah from place to place. So he has a scenario whereby you have people in a beta surim, people that are in jail, and he says, Would we bring the Shulchan Aruch discusses whether we should bring a Sefer Torah for them or not? And the uh, the Biolacha uh, says the following: it says, Mitam de Minadin. So it's an individual, there is no obligation on the specific individual to hear Kriyat Torah. Sounds like he's saying, it's Chovat the community has to worry about it, has to make sure there's Kriyat Torah. but you as an individual, you can't go to the Beit HaMidrash, okay, so you, uh, you don't have a Chovat yourself. Uh, and therefore, he says, that is the reason why you would not bring it. So in this Beit HaSurim, this prison, you have, you know, the Machlakat Toranit, and you've got, uh, you've got 10 people there, they need the Sefer Torah. That's something else. That's different. But so from there, it seems to be that he says that each individual does not have a particular, a particular obligation. On the other hand, if we go a little bit further on, in Siman Kuf Mem Vav, which is the Siman talking about, again, what a person, the proper behavior, during the Kriyat HaTorah, and it says a person shouldn't talk and a person shouldn't go out. And there is a different opinions. Again, there are four different, four main approaches of the Rishonim, how to learn the, how to learn the Sugya. But there's a discussion whether a person is allowed to sit and learn during Kriyat HaTorah. And uh, one of the opinion says that so, so long as there are 10 people that are listening, you can sit and learn and, and, and uh, whatever, so long as you're doing it quietly, so you're not going to disturb other people. Everybody agrees, you need you need 10 people sitting and hearing the, the uh, Kriyat HaTorah, you have to have the Tzibu. But what about the individual? So here, the Biyo Alacha writes something which seems to contradict. He says, uh, he said, based on the opinion that the Shulchan Aruch brings, 
יש מתירים לגרוס בלחש, there are those who say person can sit and, and, uh, and uh, learn quietly so long as there are 10 people listening. He says um, the following, right? He, he asks a question. He says, He says, even if you've got 10 other people that are sitting there and listening to the Kriyat Torah, that's very nice. It's very nice for them. But what about you? He says, My money like a day. What does it help for you as an individual? What about your obligation? He says, I'll call ish for ish mutalachiyuv the takanat Ezra. That right, takanat Ezra, in terms of uh, how often and when we have the, the, the Kratza Torah. But he says, Each person has got their chiyuv in terms of, in terms of listening to the, uh, to the, uh, to the Kratza Torah. Right? So to sum up what we've said so far, as we said again, the Gemara does not ask explicitly, the Rishonim do not discuss explicitly. On whom the on whom the the chova there is income is it on the individual is it on the tzibur practically speaking we only have kratatara together with the tzibur but as we've seen there would be a difference whether if an individual has you know how strict we have to be and how stringent we have to be for the individual's conduct if if it's an individual obligation the bir alacha here seems to seems to contradict himself slightly and um, that on the one hand he says we don't take it to the beit asurim because it's on the tzibur on the other hand. He says each individual, you, you can't uh, even question his wife. You've got 10 other people sitting and listening. What about you? You have to listen because you're part of the Shkova of, of, uh, of, of, of Kreta Torah. So there are a number of different proofs that are brought here back and forth. Like I said, based on the Rishonim, based on uh, really based on, based on Diokim, based on inferences in terms of what the Rishonim say. One of the, one of the discussions seems to be the simple chat is that Kreta Torah would be a chovat tzibur. Again, the fact that it can only be done in the tzibur. And uh, we find that there is an individual obligation regarding, not regarding Kreta Torah, but regarding Shnai Mikra, Vechat Tagum. Mentioned it last time, that the Gemara says, and the Shulchan Aruch brings it down, Siman Rish Pehe, so that there's a chova that each individual is required to, Lo'olam Yashlim Adam, Parashiyotav Matzibur, that each week a person should go and read, uh, read the, the uh, parasha, Twice, together with the Targum discussion, we spoke once whether what's preferable is Targum Onkelos, or is it Perush Rashi, or is it a different Targum? We discussed that in the past. But it says, even if you're going to come to Shul, even if you come to Shul and you hear the Parashiyot, then nonetheless, you still have to go and read um, uh, Shnai Mikra at home or, or, or wherever. So it would seem to be that there is an obligation on the Tzibur to hear from the Sefer Torah and Shabbat, and this is the obligation on the individual Separate from that is to is to read uh, uh, Mikra when one is able to. There is one opinion in the Rishonim that I mentioned as well, which says that uh, again, this is not the pshat, but there is there is an opinion in the Rishonim who says that the obligation of Shnayim Mikra is in a situation where you're not able to you're not able to hear with the tzibur. And if we go according to that, that would make it sound like there is an individual obligation. And only in a case where somebody did not hear the Torah reading in Shul. So therefore, do Shnai Mikra at home. But the Rambam and the Shulchan Aruch and the simple meaning of, of, of all the other poskim is that, uh, that no, that even if, even if you have heard the, uh, even if you have heard the, uh, the Torah reading in Shul, you still have to do it by yourself. And again, that would seem to indicate, that would seem to indicate that the individual obligation is not in the Torah reading in Shul, but it is something else. It's something separate. Well, Skim as well discussed, by the way, why is it? Why is there an obligation of of Shnai Mikra v'Chat Targum? The Trumat Edeshin talks about this. So one of two reasons is it could be that there is simply a, and, and this will be re relevant for our, for our uh, topic as well. It could be that there is just an obligation that in the same way we finish reading the Torah every year in the from the Sefer Torah, so every individual has to go through. There was a Takana from Simchat Torah to Simchat Torah. You need to get through the entire the entire Torah, right? This was before Daf Yomi, this was before Rambam Yomi. This is the most successful to this day. Parashat Shavua is the most successful, you know, daily, weekly learning program that exists. But uh, but uh, that a person just has to has to complete it. Um, or the other side of it is maybe that it's got to do in terms of the preparation for for, for the reading of the Torah in the in, in the tzibur. The person has to go through that parasha before to know it, to be able to read it, to understand it, some form of preparation. That would be enough kamina for our situation. When a person is, travels, let's say this week, a person that goes from Israel goes to, finds himself in Chutz Laaretz. So now they're reading their Parashat Nassau. Now you read Parashat Nassau 
last week. So do you have to do Shnai Mikra Bechad Tagum for Parashat Nasol? Well, you've already, if you've already done it for Parashat Nasol, you don't really need to do it again to prepare. But if the whole point is that it's not necessarily connected to the Torah reading of that week, but it's so that you go through the entire Torah and you go through all the Parashiyot, so you're still going to need to go through Parashat Baalotcha. When you come back, so you'll miss Baalotcha, there'll be on the next one, so you should still do the, you should still do the, uh, that, uh, that Pasha. Okay. That's so just going back to this, so, so how do we resolve the contradiction between the Be'er Lacha? Are we left with a Chobat HaYachid, or are we left with a Chobat HaTzibur? So I heard an explanation. I don't remember where I saw it, who wrote it, but I think it makes a lot of sense, which is the following, which is that, as we've said for various reasons, it seems to be that it's a Chobat HaTzibur, that it would make sense that, that Kriyat HaTorah is something which uh, there is not an individual uh, obligation per se to give the Kriyat HaTorah. That is something when the Tzibur comes together. But the question is, who is the tzibur? What is the tzibur? You know, there's this sort of, sort of, you know, abstract entity. You know, people talk about, you know, the tzibur. You hear this often. You know, people talk about, you know, this community. You know, this country. You know, this yeshiva. You know, who is this this entity that exists? It's made up of the people. It's made up of the individuals. And maybe what the Berlacha is saying, and this is says that that there is a takana on the tzibur. There is a chovah on the tzibur. So if you're at home and you're not able to come to shul to be there, you don't have any any obligation. But when you're there, you're there as part of the tzibur. So what? Now we're going to say, okay, there is this, there is this chova. It's on the tzibur who has to hear the the, the Kriyata Torah. Okay, who is that? It's that guy. It's that guy. It's, it's everybody but me. It doesn't make sense. Who is the tzibur? You're there. You're part of the tzibur. So as an individual who comprises part of the tzibur, therefore you then have an obligation, and 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 that is part of your obligation as the tzibur. And then we can understand in the first case where he says. When the Biolacha says that uh, that uh, you don't bring this, you have certain individuals who are there by themselves, you don't bring them a Sefer Torah, right? Because they as individuals don't have an obligation. They're not there, they're not there as part of a Tzibur. But in this case, where you are there as part of the Tzibur, so right now, I am not that I individually have an obligation, but I am now part of the Tzibur. I'm one of the people. So it's for everybody to say, well, there's going to be 10 people besides me, but right now you're here, you're there, you're part of it. So therefore, you should you should listen to that and you should hear all the words, etc. Where does all this leave, so where does all this leave us with this with this complicated scenario? Well, it would seem to be that that uh, again the simple uh, understanding is that a person now goes, a person's in a different uh, a, a, a different country, and they have a separate parsha to what the parsha would be when he's when he's at home or he's somewhere else. But whatever the parsha is there of the temple, that's the parsha that's going to be read. And you, as an individual, you come and you come to shul. You don't, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't make sense to now start doing a start doing a separate parsha. If there is, again, where the case comes up, let's say you have a group, you have a group that goes on a tour, or goes on a cruise, or goes on a, goes on holiday. You have this now. Maybe you have a school group that's coming from Chutzlaretz and it's coming to visit Israel. So there, are, so when the entire group is uh, is coming from Chutzlaretz and that zibur has their own meaning. Huh? Right then, so the question becomes: What uh, what uh, what, what parsha should, should that tzibur read? So you can imagine again there are discussions in the poskim and there are machlokot, but there are you know many would say should be tzela chokma as a tshuva. He says we go by the majority, we go by so it's a group that's from uh, that's uh, from Chul and they're going back to Chul, then they should they, they can still read the read the parsha that they uh, that they have according to their cycle. But of course, if you go and you're joining part of a part of a larger community. So you would go and you would and you would listen to whatever whatever pasha they are they are reading, which is the pasha of that of, of that place. And even if we say that each individual who's there has an obligation as part of the tzibur, right now you're part of the larger tzibur. So that's what you have to. Uh, uh, so, so, so that's what you have to hear. There are those that want to be, and if it's possible, and one wants to be stringent to arrange, you know, after mincha, like we said, or you know, an extra an extra reading to do. Sometimes that's practical, and sometimes it's not. But uh, that would be that, that. That seems to be the uh, the conclusion. רבי חנניה בן הקש אומר צעק השבחו לזעקות ישראל לפיכך בלנטו המצוות שנאמר לנו יחפץ זמן צדקו